Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today in our digital navigation course provided by the House of Mercy. Today's topic is going to be social media. My name is Marcus, and I'll be presenting. Let's start with a brief overview about our topics and goals, and that would be explaining what social media is, how it's helpful, why you'd want to use it, identifying some of the tools and terms that are commonly used, and navigating your page. The platforms we'll be teaching you to use will be Facebook and Instagram, as they are two of the most popular platforms used. So let's start with a definition of what social media is. It consists of websites and apps that allow people to share content and participate in networking. And how is that directly helpful to you? Well, this could allow you to connect with anyone just about anywhere in the world, as long as they have an internet connection. A lot of these social media platforms also have built-in communication tools that allow you to freely message and share media between you, groups, and friends. You can also learn and develop interests based on your input and what you like. There's also sheer entertainment, whether it's looking at silly videos and pictures or other content that makes you feel a range of emotions. You can also find curated interests through the use of algorithms those are essentially mathematical programs based on what your input is. And this allows you to find more content that is more relevant to you and what you like. Lastly, you can join local groups and find industry news too, whether you're a fan of say, barbecuing, or you wanna find out what's happening in your neighborhood. Social media can provide that for you. So what do we need to get started? Really not much, just an internet connection, a device that can browse the internet, and a secure email address. Make sure only you have access to this secure email address and only you know the password to this secure email address. If you forget your Facebook, Instagram, or other account password, it's typically sent to the associated email address. So only you should know this information. Let's begin creating our account. By going to the home page, we'll go to Facebook first. You can go there by typing facebook.com into the address bar at the top and hitting enter or go. From there, at the login page, you want to click the create a new account button. You'll find a form will come up where you can enter basic information about your account and yourself. Once this information is entered, click sign up, and there may be a short delay as it creates an account and verifies that you are indeed a human. In addition to this internal verification, you'll be sent a code to the email address you use to sign up. This code is sent typically immediately, so you can jump over or have your email opened, locate the email that came. It'll probably come in your inbox, but sometimes it may go in your spam or your junk email. Just make sure you have the correct email selected. Highlight the code that is sent to you. Copy it, or just remember it. And type it in. You'll find that if you just copy and paste in this case, these letters shouldn't be here. So we'll need to delete them, go back to our email, and just get the numbers. Now that it's identical, just hit continue to finish verifying that this account is yours and you're a real human. Perfect. Now this will take you to the main login for Facebook. Note that Facebook and Instagram are both owned by the same company. So the process of creating your account will be almost identical. The main difference between Instagram and Facebook is that Instagram will have you create a username during that form filling. The username can't be used by anyone else, and it will verify if the username is available and tell you whether you'll have to change it 
or you can use it. Before we explore a social media's homepage, let's review some terms that you'll commonly see in here, starting with the term media, which can vaguely be used to describe objects that express or communicate. That's typically text, pictures, sound, and videos. It's a pretty vague term. A lot of what you see could be termed as media. This picture is media as well. Next, a profile describes someone's account web page. That's specific information about the user, and that can include anything from a picture to when they were born, where they work, where they live, or other information. Next, a post is content that's uploaded by a user to their page or groups or another person's. Usually that's also text, pictures, and or video. That can also contain links to other websites. Posting is just a verb, the act of uploading content. Lastly, a filter is a visual effect that you can apply to media, like a photo or video. An easy example of a filter that you'd use would be like an old time classic filter. And that would make this picture all black and white and look like it was taken much long ago. Some additional useful terms are caption and hashtag. And that's the use of words to explain, link, or group media, ideas, and memes together. An example of a caption describing this media, this picture, could be me busy at work. We could use a hashtag to group other people who work in customer service by using the hash symbol and then a string of words all put together. This way, when other people use this same tag, hashtag customer service, they would be able to pull up pictures that all relate to the same media. Next, your feed is a collection of posts based on your friends and content. Usually you can scroll through this endlessly. Algorithms will keep generating content to try and keep you engaged. Next, the term tag is the action of labeling someone or something to media. For example, if this was me, I would tag myself. Usually the thing tagged also has an account on the app. So if this was my friend in the background, I could tag her as well, and she could see that she's also in the picture and enjoy it too. Lastly, a notification is a list of activities related to your activity and interests that updates in real time. For example, if you were browsing the social media site or on Facebook and your mother liked a picture of you, you would get a notification immediately that your mother or a different user liked your photo and you could use that to interact further. Now that we've got some terms out of the way, Let's take a look at what the experience is like once you've logged into your account. On our Facebook homepage and other social media pages, you'll find the layout is very similar. We'll start from the left, move to the middle, and move on to the right side. Typically, the left side consists of some sort of menu bar. From there, you can access your friends, manage your groups, and do a whole lot more. You'll find that Facebook labels a lot of what these icons already are to give you a good idea of what you can get into. As you can see, there's a lot of content and things you can simply do on here. We don't need to spend the whole time exploring every little feature, but know that there's a lot of capability here and a lot of things to enjoy. Towards the middle is where our feed is going to be located. Currently, because our account is so new, Facebook doesn't really know what to recommend for us right now. So we'll get some content together right now. We'll search House of Mercy, Seattle. And you'll find that more than just one House of Mercy exists and it'll show up for everyone. Now, technically, House of Mercy is not located in Seattle. So let's see what happens when we remove Seattle from the search. Yeah, now that we've added something more relevant or something that it can find and understand and the search engine understands not to search through Seattle, we found our actual House of Mercy. 
From there, we can view the page, and that'll contain a bunch of information that you can look through too. The same is true for just about anyone's page or any group's page. Some of these icons in this middle area, fundraisers, reviews, followers, some of those are more business centered. You're not gonna find people reviewing other people. But the information is generally the same. You can navigate it from this middle bar and engage how you'd like. Going back to our main page is simple. We just go to the upper left corner, click the home icon. Notice that you can scroll over some things and immediately go back to them. Oh, but I almost forgot before we go, because we're fans of a group, and if we're fans of a group or a person, we can follow them or add them in some capacity. Usually that button is right below their home banner image. So now that we've clicked follow and it confirms that we're following House of Mercy, let's see how this affects our feed by going home. We'll refresh the page. And because House of Mercy hasn't posted anything very recently, and we only have basically one friend, there's not any new posts on there at the moment. So let's see what happens if we add a lot more interests and a lot more content to what we like, and how that will affect our feed. So in no particular order, just going to type in some things that a lot of people tend to like, will like it, and take it from there. Maybe let's try a hashtag while we're at it. Hashtag barbecue. We'll just leave it at that. And now everyone that has barbecue on their mind of any kind will appear as you search this. And there's a group you can join if you're a barbecue lover. And then there's also individuals posting just things that they like. Just for the sake of random fun, let's, uh, let's join a barbecue group or two. You'll note that when I highlight this group, it says that it's a public group, so anyone can join. There are some private groups and it'll tell you right away. Some of them also require some questions or other details to verify that you are indeed a human and you're actually interested in joining the group productively and being a good member of the group. So we've got some sports, we've got some food. Let's uh, type in video games, get a nice well-rounded home feed. And these are random. anything related to video games or using that search tag comes up. And you may have noticed there's some content that really doesn't have to do much with video games. But we'll just like a few things and see what comes of it. And now that we're going back home, now you'll see there's content on our feed. And this comes from one of the barbecue places we had. Someone posted just an hour ago. That looks tasty. And now that our feed is going, we can just keep scrolling down. You'll notice the scroll bar on the right seems like it's going down, but it's going to endlessly load content. So even if I go to the bottom, see me trying to get to the bottom, it immediately loads more and more as soon as it can. Now this still isn't at the endless point because I have so few things liked, but the more you use it, the closer and closer it'll get to a truly endless experience. And that doesn't really take long. So we've taken a few good looks at Facebook and how to use it. And though I mentioned the same company that owns Instagram also owns Facebook, they're both different in some ways too. Rather than going through the entire process and reviewing basically terms that are the same, let's look at some key differences and see what you can spot too between Facebook and Instagram's homepage. This is a picture of, or I should say a screenshot of my Instagram page. You'll notice some things are blurred out for privacy's sake, but you can see that there's a lot more content that automatically becomes generated because I've used it a bit more, a lot more than the account we just created. Still, you'll find that 
the banner on the side with some navigational tools is roughly the same. There's a search. Exploring will generate content that you haven't seen before, but you might like. Reels are just short videos. Messages is their direct communication feature. It's a built-in messaging program. Notifications tell you when things happen and what happens. Creating allows you to post content. And then profile will link you back to your main page and allow you to edit information about yourself. And just like Facebook had a more option, Instagram does as well to engage with more features too. Similarly, you'll notice the center of the page contains a feed just like the others. Because this account has friends and more interests active, you'll see icons across the top. These are all stories and they would appear in Facebook as well. They're essentially a snapshot of someone's day and they can release any content they want. This disappears after 24 hours. Typically, you would view any stories you'd like, scroll through feeds and interact as you'd like too. There's a like button, which is the heart. The chat bubble, once clicked on, will allow you to comment. And the plain button allows you to share and repost this to other people so they can see these things as well. Lastly, this icon for Instagram is a saving feature, which basically allows you to favorite or bookmark content that you'd like. Facebook has a very similar feature, and it's located in roughly the same area. What we didn't cover in the Facebook section was what appears on the right side of your page typically. And this is mostly ads and suggestive information too. So you'll find that my profile is right up here. And if I wanted to switch, I'd use this button up here. If you recall on the Facebook main page, the logout button and some of the other notification button was bumped over here. Below that are suggestions. These are friends or people. And in some cases it'll tell you that they're also followed by or liked by or have some relationship with other people that I know. And they encourage you to follow them or basically friend them. Beyond that, the experience will be roughly the same, just with slightly different features and tweaks. The users are also a bit different in terms of what the average user base is. Facebook tends to have an older population, so you'll find the support and the features and you would say the intuitive use is going to be geared towards an older crowd. Instagram caters to a typically younger crowd, though it has everyone, both of them do. So you'll find items that might not need a label that younger people are very used to using don't just pop up. And now that you're set to explore and engage, let's review some etiquette and some tips about how to engage in a positive way. Realistically, there's no upfront tips on how to politely interact with people, only rules that would get you banned from social media. Remember that your actions and your profile can always be accessible to the public, even if you have some high level privacy settings that make you feel or make your account appear completely private or just viewable to your friends. And that snapshot of your activity and what you do can be associated with your character. Whether that's fair or not is another question. So the first tip, the first tip I would suggest would be to simply lurk, look, and listen. And just like stepping into an unfamiliar setting or party or place, try and feel out the scene before you jump into it. No one is requiring you to interact, to like, to friend people, to do anything that you don't want to do. And this is a great chance to learn and see kind of how things just play out naturally and to make sure you're not the person who's doing that embarrassing thing that goes viral. Next, I would suggest that we think before we react. Outrage-based engagement is a particularly interesting but dark pattern that a lot of social media utilizes. And that happens when someone sees content that bothers them so much they can't help but react to it. So imagine someone's giving you fried chicken advice and you watch a video of them starting to begin the prep for their chicken and they wrap it in foil and they put it in the microwave. Of course that's ridiculous. And the reaction you'd have would be something of humor or outrage. And maybe it would be so silly that you share it with your friends. 
And while it might seem like this person might just be clueless and it could just be a silly thing, in reality, these days, a lot of this content is intentional and it's made because they know that you are going to be upset or entertained in some way and you'll keep engaging with it. Social media companies make more money the more you stick around to engage. It really doesn't matter to them why you're engaging when the money is the motivation. Another way to think about this is knowing that a simple conversation where everyone's in agreement is a short conversation, but if it's an argument, people tend to remain committed and involved. And the more involved you are, the more money social media companies make. So make sure you're aware and you avoid things that make you engage just because you're outraged or you feel very intensely. And part of what ties to that is limiting your time. There really is no end to the content that will appear on your feed once you get going with it. And looking for an endless list for a long time is called doom scrolling. And that's because it can become an unhealthy behavior. I think a lot of us are hardwired to maybe move on to another task after we finish the one that we're on, finishing our show, or whatever you're doing. When content doesn't ever end, you have to be mindful of when you pull the plug. And lastly, verifying important information is a key aspect of being able to enjoy social media. It's really in our human nature to assume trusted people are giving correct information. Unfortunately, a good headline sells a better sells better than a boring and an honest one. And if you're getting new information on social media, which can spread virally, whether or not it's true, it's really important that you at least take a moment and Google and review it too, especially if a topic is very important. If it's sports, spending on your favorite team or saying who's the best player of all time, those are things you can kindly argue over. But if there are issues tied to morality, you want to make sure that you're doing a good faith effort to make sure you're educated on it and not just being caught up in all the drama. Aside from thinking about how you act and how you engage with other people and companies and groups, there are some other useful tips that would help you have a good time and ensure a safe time for you as well. Firstly, Make sure you have sensitive discussions in private, whether you're talking about someone else's health or a sensitive topic. Use the direct messaging systems that the social media platforms have. Otherwise, your conversation can basically be in plain sight. Next, you want to keep public comments and discussion fairly short. This isn't always the case. Sometimes a good lengthy discussion is a good thing, but generally, folks want to engage with content that's easily digestible and short. They're not going to read a whole paragraph or multiple paragraphs. Next, you want to adjust your privacy settings to your liking. Remember that by default, a lot of the social media settings are, are laid up in a way that makes you connect and pushes you to engage with other people. It encourages social activity. You can easily adjust this within your settings, however, and I encourage you to do so. Always log out of non-personal devices. So if you're borrowing a friend's computer or phone or at the library accessing it, make sure that you log out of your social media account and any other accounts that you have before you leave the device. Next, I suggest we start simple with a profile picture and nothing else. Again, you're not required to engage or required to do anything and you're on social media typically to enjoy it and to connect. Sometimes it can feel overwhelming and maybe dangerous with your data. So I, I like and recommend starting with a profile picture so familiar people can know that it's you when you try and add them, but then take it from there. People who know you will continue to know you and seek out information if they want to know you. Next, I would practice avoiding risky and annoying content. Like we discussed earlier, outrage-based engagement is a very strong mechanism that's used in social media. And sometimes it's hard to pull yourself away from saying something to someone who's being offensive or content that's offensive. But in reality, you have experts working against you and your interests to make you engage. 
So you have to be mindful to pull yourself away from this at times. Similarly, don't believe that you can't be tricked. A good comedian, for example, can make you laugh. A good actor can make you feel a range of emotions as they play a character. And a team of experts in marketing and psychology can get in your head, especially when they know what you like and what you don't like and all the information you'll be feeding them as you engage in social media. Be a little bit careful about how you get pulled into things and how things influence you. And like I mentioned earlier, get a second opinion or a third opinion. Google things. Do your research. And lastly, don't link with negativity, dangerous, or hateful content in people. Like I also mentioned, a lot of what you engage with and how you engage with things is going to be used to, as a judgment mechanism, essentially. If you're liking and joining a bunch of groups that have a lot of hateful messages, folks may assume that you're hateful. You don't want that. You want to enjoy the experience that's on here too. But with all the negativity and how easy it is to let it engulf you, you have to be mindful of this and actively participating in avoiding these things. And before we wrap things up, let's go over some common scams Unfortunately, these things still exist, and some of them only get more and more complicated. And you don't want to make yourself a target, especially when folks know that you're new to a, a system or anything. It can put a target on your back. So let's review some common scams and how to avoid them. Starting with the security question, phishing. And phishing is like the, the verb or the hobby with the letter F phishing. It's basically casting a net to get information from people. A common security question phishing would come in a very innocent form, maybe in one of those tests that say, what animal represents you best? And in that test of answering random questions to determine your animal that represents you, you may be asked things like, where did you grow up? What time were you born? What school did you go to? In case you haven't realized, some of those questions are security questions that you'd use to retrieve your account. You always want to make sure you avoid giving any personal information or information that could be used against you that isn't already public. Of course, folks tend to know your name, so you can usually use that, but your mother's birth name, the city you grew up in, other kind of subtle details that are usually used to uh, verify that you are yourself can be used against you as well. Next, let's talk about fake email updates. It is very common to get an email that may come from, say, Facebook, or appears like it's from Facebook, and it might say something like, your account's been hacked, or something very awful has happened, and you need to fix this right away. The easiest solution for this, and for honestly any other phishing scam, or any email that, that prompts you to do something and makes you feel uncomfortable, is to go on the website itself. So instead of following a link that says something happened to your Facebook or you've been hacked, simply try and log into your Facebook first through Facebook's website. Next, we'll talk about generally just dangerous links. And that can be someone who gets their account hacked and then they make a post and this link leads to another website that steals your information. Or it could be an email as well that has a link that, again, might look just like Facebook, but the site is actually a clone of the site and steals your information and login. Generally, I recommend avoiding links unless you can get a good idea of where you're going. Remember that you can always put a link directly into Google search and see what comes up as well. Next, you'll find that occasionally someone will have their account compromised and it may be a friend or a family member. And whoever takes this account might even message you asking for help or money or advice or something that they can get from you. Remember that it's always okay to call a friend or family member. And if they're asking for really personal stuff, I strongly recommend that you verify by talking to them in person. And if you can't talk to them in person, then you can call them too. A lot of the time, lately, these friends and family members who get hacked 
are pushing investment scams. A lot of folks may have heard about cryptocurrency, but anything that involves putting money down to get rich quick is an investment scam. Unfortunately, there are no shortcuts to getting rich, and I still can't find any myself. And the folks who tell you on social media about how to get rich are probably scamming you. I've yet to find one that is successful, and I strongly avoid following any investment advice based on someone reaching out to you. Maybe if it's a part of your homework and your personal things, but otherwise, avoid investing in anything. Lastly, Exchanging adult pictures and blackmail is a sensitive but important topic that we cover too. It's very easy these days to get stock photos or random photos of a, a random person, even an attractive person, and then to use those photos or even edit them to look like they're the real person in real time talking to you. Unfortunately, this can lead to exchanging pictures, some that are very sensitive. And after that damage is done, usually folks tend to get extorted or blackmailed into doing a range of things, including giving money out now that they've been tricked. The simple approach here is to only engage and exchange pictures or anything sensitive with people that you know. You will absolutely be approached by a fake account pretending to be an attractive person trying to get you to click links and talk to people. Uh, I would say every month, if you're on social media and you're active, you will have bots, essentially, or hacked accounts reaching out to try and steal your information. They're usually pretty easy to spot. They tend to have the same information, no other friends, but some of these are getting pretty sophisticated. So be careful how you meet people and what you tell strangers that you meet. And this concludes today's lecture, folks. We appreciate you coming out and joining us today. Hopefully you have the confidence and know-how to create and navigate and enjoy safely the use of social media. Always, input is an important part of what we like to do here. So if there's a way that we could do this job better, that we could engage better, teach you better, or just make this better in any way, please let us know. We appreciate you joining us. Have a good day.